Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden Wolf, and today, actually, I should show you something. One second, one second. This is my PreSonus Studio Live AR8. And why am I holding it, you might ask? Well, <laughs> it blew up. Not kidding, it actually blew up. Now, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen here. You can see, if you notice, there's some smoke rising up from the bottom grills. That's right. I turned it on. I uh, heard some weird kind of like grindy stuff happening in the headphones and in my speakers. And I turned it off. I unplugged my speakers just to protect them. And then all of a sudden, I turned it on. The grinding returned, but then it stopped. Thought everything was good. So I turned a video on and I heard a loud pop, at which point... This died. Now, I've got to take it in with PreSonus. But you know what? I mean, they're usually not that fast at getting back to you. And I, I have a feeling we're going to go through the rigmarole of, well, did you try turn it? Did you turn it on? Did you turn it? No, this thing is dead. It exploded. Smoke was seen rising from the bottom of this. So let me put it back. So what do you do? You, <laughs> you have your mixer, an expensive mixer at that, that just completely blows up on you. I don't know. I have to do a morning show. I actually work on the radio. Uh, and I wake up in the morning and I, I remote in and I do my morning show from here, Dark Corner Studios. So what am I going to do? Well, it's at this point that you got to be very thankful for having friends in low places. <laughs> this is so cute. This is the Xenix Q502 USB. And while this might be a very, very cheap board in comparison to what I've been using, we're going to find out exactly how cheap and how good this can sound. And is it comparable? I mean, that is uh, about a $350 mixer. Uh, US dollars, of course. I spent closer to 600 on it. And this is about American, about 79 bucks. So we're going to see, does this compete with the Studio Live AR8? Let's find out. This is Aiden Wolf. So it's uh, day two of working with the Xenix Q502 USB. Um, and I, I got to say, I'm going to eat some of my words for Behringer up until this point. Uh, I've usually avoided most things Behringer for most of my career. I just, I've avoided them. I've had a few bad experiences with Behringer. So whenever I see a Behringer board or anything like that, I generally don't recommend it. Um, but this... Now, just to recap, uh, my usual board, the PreSonus AR8, completely blew up. And I gotta say, the Xenix hasn't blown up yet. So, I mean, that's one mark for it. See this phones button? Yeah, that one. Funny enough, even though it's not even on the Zoom Live Track L8, they actually have a button to be able to isolate your monitors on an incredibly cheap mixer. Relatively simple to set up. Uh, you got to make sure if you do buy one of these, you want to make sure that it's in the right uh, USB. It can't be 3.0. It causes some severe problems with audio. Anyways, uh, pretty simple setup. Of course, you've got one XLR input. You, of course, have a bunch of line ins here. You have a main mix button right here. You've got uh, your phone's main mix. You've got this cute little... This is great. This will actually show you your meters. You also have some RCAs. Um, yeah, this is all in all a very, very simple setup, but a great one. Um, can't say I'm that upset about the Xenix Q502 USB. You do have built-in compression. I haven't played with the built-in compression because I do all that in post, but I mean, just having a little bit of compression that you can kind of just eke out if you're in a loud environment, or maybe you just kind of want to stomp down or bring up a little bit of the lows or bring down a little bit of the highs. Compression can really sweeten up some of the core audio. Just be careful whenever you have compression or any kind of gating or anything like that, on a mixer, 
as soon as you put it onto your live feed, so as soon as it's part of the chain, you cannot reverse it after the fact. You have it for good. That's why I like doing stuff after the fact. You got 50 dB of gain, which isn't bad considering uh, the price of this. All in all, uh, score for this little mixer, uh, it's, it's a USB cheap little Behringer Xenix 502, Q502 USB. And I gotta say, on a scale of one to 10 for saving my ass, it's a 10. Would I recommend it? You know what, if you're just starting out uh, for a podcast and you're doing some solo work uh, and you don't need to plug anything more than one microphone, yeah, this thing is a great go-to for $80 or whatever it is. This might just save your bacon when you're doing a podcast. And may I say, if you are a podcaster and you're running a, a just any board, maybe it's the Rodecaster Pro Zoom L8, and that thing goes, it's going to be a good two-week wait for you to get it fixed. So you know what? For 80 bucks, you can have this as a backup. And you know what? For a backup, it ain't too bad. I think I'm going to be keeping this around. Sorry, John. And I got to say, all this is thanks to PreSonus. Thanks, PreSonus, for allowing my mixer to blow up so I could try out a Behringer product. Anyways, if you want to check this out, I'll have a link to it down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you really liked it, hey, why not hit the subscribe button? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And yes, it's day two. I'm wearing the same shirt. I'm in quarantine, okay? I'm allowed to. Yeah. Sorry. I also haven't shaved in like three weeks and it's going to be like my quarantine beard. What do you think? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs>